Hey guys, welcome back to the Kampai Sugai Podcast. My name is Gavin. And first off, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there. I know this is going to appear after Thanksgiving, but we're in the holiday season. It's a jolly good time. And hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Hope you guys stayed safe because Black Friday can get pretty epic. But the thing is, Black Friday hasn't been as epic during these past few years just because everybody's shopping online. <laughs> so Cyber Monday, hope you guys had a safe Cyber Monday, if anything. But um, but today we got a, a really cool guest with me, and uh, I, I got I to gotta give him some credit here because he's been in a lot of different productions. So um, you, you've acted in Inhumans, Waikiki the Film, NCIS Hawaii, Hawaii Five-0, Last Resort, the reboot version of it. And... Um, and you've also done some theater work, and you are the author of Concrete Rainbow, which we'll be talking about today, which is your new book. Yeah. Please give a round of applause for Mr. Jason Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jay, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, no doubt, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. So how was your Thanksgiving? It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Real low key. And my wife cooked a turkey. Okay. You know, we killed it in like almost one sitting. Okay. <laughs> uh, my son is 15 and he's swimming. So, mm. like, he's basically a bottomless pit. Mm. Like, <laughs> oh, he's like the Michael Phelps then. He is. 10,000 you know? calories. Exactly. That's what's going on with him. He's just like, he's just tearing it up. I see him walking back and forth into the kitchen. I'm like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to make something for lunch tomorrow. There's going to be no leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the go to for Thanksgiving, like, food wise? Um, turkey. Sometimes stuffing, but turkey and gravy. My wife does mm. a great job. She, like, cooks the turkey in a bag and then mm. puts, like, liquid smoke and stuff. And mm -hmm. she's kind of developed this over the years, and it's real good. And then my, my dad will sometimes put a turkey in a, in a smoker okay, and smoke that. And that, that's, that's amazing. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my go-to. <clears throat> I think my go-to is stuffing. Yeah. So I... I was my wife. My wife knows. I'm I'm a stuffing guy. I love stuffing, um, and gravy. I need the gravy there. You gotta have the gravy. Gotta have the gravy. The gravy changes it from like a regular meal, like a regular like, hey, we just cook exactly. chicken or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you can get, you know, me, the next day because there ain't the pressure and all the family and it's supposed to be this and it's mm -hmm. supposed to be that. The next mm -hmm. day you're kind of all alone and you make mm -hmm. that sandwich. Yes. With some cranberry sauce mm -hmm. and gravy. Mm -hmm. You get the salty and the sweet. Yep. You're like, what? Yep. That's I the deal. I forgot what you call that when you put gravy in a sandwich. There's there's a term for it. Oh, is there? Actually. Oh, I forgot what it was called though. Luxurious? <laughs> Epic. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> But but there is a yeah I think in um, somewhere in the states they call it they call it something like a a messy a messy sandwich or something like or smothered oh. smothered sandwich smothered sandwich something like that smothered sandwich makes sense but you know what I okay this might sound disgusting uh -huh. <laughs> but if you don't heat the gravy up mm. and you can kind of just put it on like butter almost like uh. it spreads like a jelly because uh -huh. mm -hmm. it's cold and it's yeah. all congealed yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might sound disgusting to some people, but when you think about it, it's right there. You know what I mean? The sandwich is cold anyway. So that sounds like um, they they do that with like soup dumplings sometimes. Ah. But like, um, of course, they're gonna heat up the soup dumplings. <laughs> if you yeah, if you're eating soup dumplings, guys, please make sure you heat up your soup. Yeah, probably. But um, that's the same. It's the same thing. They put the the stock in the the the, the dumpling, dumpling, right? And then it, it's like, you know, congealed like that. It's, right. it's all gelatin at that point. So then when they put in the steamer and everything, it just melts. And then when you eat it, it just melts in your mouth, mm. you know. Well, I, I like a little bit of that, that texture too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like that gelatin, that gelatin type. So I, I, I get what you're saying. I'm thinking about gravy dumplings. Now. <laughs> like, hey, that would work, that actually. Would, that would work. Yeah, that would work really well. I want to talk to my wife. <laughs> You thought of a new thing for Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm like, yo, let's do the gravy dumplings. Tur turkey gravy dumplings right there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, so um, let's, let's talk about, there's a lot of things we could talk about, but mm. I, I want to talk about Concrete Rainbow first. And, yeah. And, you know, how you got into uh, writing it. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I'm not, uh, it, it just came out. So you're catching me pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm, so I'm still sort of, I'm still sort of, uh, on my heels as far as like what it was I actually what it was I actually did mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, 
it's a it's a coming age story of a mixed race boy growing up in Ever Beach, Hawaii, in the early '90s. Mm. And uh, we talked a little bit about this, but Hawaii in the '90s, there were pockets of uh, of some. St- Crystal methamphetamine took off in Hawaii in mm-hmm. the 90s, and it was actually yeah. sort of ground zero for the crystal meth epidemic that would eventually spread throughout the United States of America, and mm-hmm. it was sort of tested here. Mm. And uh, when I was re- doing some research for the book, I mean, it, it was literally that. Like, there was a, a couple of crime families that were sort of testing it out here to see how it would sell and mm-hmm. how things would work, and then they were going to branch out. And, um, and it decimated entire neighborhoods. Mm. It decimated on the west side Mm -hmm. uh, in particular. And uh, so this boy is growing up in the midst of that. Now, the story is told from his perspective, and so he's not aware of sort of these larger, the the larger epidemic, the larger, you know, he's going through his own sort of personal journey. Mm. But all of this is sort of the the backdrop to his his adventure. Mm. And, uh, Mm -hmm. And he just, you know, he starts here, and then he just goes down 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 and eventually hooks up with an organized crime family and and continues the downward spiral until he can sort of awaken his own sense of morality and Mm. his own um vision of the world around him so that he can free himself from the choices that he continues to make you know Mm. and uh but what's cool about it is he's a poet and so oh, he's, cool. he's sort of trying to analyze the world, and he's, he's, when he can't really articulate it, he's, he's writing these ridiculously profound and articulate poems, mm-hmm. and um, that's helping him to sort of flush out some of his thoughts and, and some of his emotions. And, uh, and, uh, and what's dope about the audiobook is all of that is then put to music. Mm. So you get to hear exactly what it would sound like, mm-hmm. and we've got all this local talent. Uh, Mai Hulk, you know, oh, okay. four-time Poa Co- uh, Kella award-winning actress. Uh, you uh-huh, got uh, uh-huh. Fight Eye's wife. Oh, awesome! Right, she's oh, you know Grammy-nominated recording artist. She's singing mm-hmm. on the on the audio book. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yoza Allen, and um, it, a lot of the music was produced by Watts Inc. in New York City, and. Um, music and money in mm. Los Angeles and mm. everybody kind of just put their best foot forward and all original music all original music wow, yeah except amazing. for except for one song uh Yoza Allen sings a cover of Alice in Chains Rooster okay if you, rec- you remember that song yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. oh my goodness and she 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 kills it oh she, and fight eye Fight I, the ever ever the director. Shout right? out to the Fight Eye. Shout out to Fight Eye. Put us <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> so I go over to Fight Eye's house, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, hey, can you can your wife, you know, sing this song? And she's she's she comes on and she's like, I would love to, you know. So I go over to her house with all the recording equipment, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, first time right off the bat, she like plays the guitar and sings it. And I'm, I'm blown away, oh. right? I'm ready to put all my equipment away. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, that, that was great. That was great. <laughs> and then Friday comes out of the room and he's like, let me hear it. And mm. I play it for him. And um, he's, like, he's like, no, babe, no, you could do better. No, you got to scream that. You got you to gotta do that. And he starts turning into the director. Oh. <laughs> he's like, you got to scream That's it. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and then she did it again. And I was like, oh, my God, man. Oh my God, it's so good. You know, I was, I was like, I wanted to drive home with the hard drive in my lap so it doesn't like, get ruined <laughs> before yeah, I get yeah. it home. You know, yeah. so and that was that was that was indicative of every performance that I was able to capture on this mm. in this audio book. I, I'm, I, I feel like uh, it's it's like doing a movie and, and then every once in a while you catch lightning in a bottle and and I feel like I just got repeatedly was able to catch lightning in a bottle. It was, Mm. it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an incredible feat that, I mean, original music and then even your voice in there. I mean, with audio books, I feel like a lot of the times it's just people just narrating it, but you put a little bit of your own theatrical style into it, which I really appreciate because you don't see that very often. I think I, I feel like, and you know, since we're just sitting here talking, like mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like I don't know, if you, you know, Tupac. Yes. You know, he's like, I peeped the weakness in the rap game and sewn it. You know, oh, it's like yeah. I, I, I feel like I, <laughs> I see a, an opening here. Like uh. I've been listening to audiobooks for the last couple of years, mm-hmm. searching for anything that 
his doing what I did. Uh -huh. And there's nothing. Nothing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the book alone, on paper, reading it, mm -hmm. is, is, is an epic journey mm -hmm. just on the paper. Mm -hmm. But then moving into this arena, into the audio book, um, you don't, uh, you, number one, you don't hear very many books about our neighborhoods, mm. you know, mm -hmm. with all of the different languages and all of the different accents and all mm -hmm. of the different types of pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. you, you don't hear that. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I grew up with it. It's in my ear. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear on the audio book, you hear all of the voices. You hear high, oh, you know, you, you hear Mililani pigeon, you hear Wainai pigeon, yeah, you, hear, yeah. you know, there's differences, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. The, and you, you, every character, every character that's in the book is based on, if not one person, two or three people sort of put together mm. and you'll recognize them. You grow up here, you'll recognize them. You know that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know that guy that was smoking ice, but you know he, <laughs> yeah. he used to be the bomber, but now he's like all skinny with the. You know that guy. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> you can spot him. You, you can, can spot, spot him. him. You right. know, you know the hippie drama teacher. Right. That's like you know smokes weed before class. Yeah. Like, you know that guy. And and <laughs> I I'm thinking of one right now actually a high, <laughs> high school history teacher. You know I what I mean. I don't want to say his name. Don't but, say his name. <laughs> but I, I think he, uh, that'd be funny if he's still teaching. But that mm. that one guy I know. I know for a fact he was smoking weed before. Yeah. He would yeah. tell us, too. Yeah. He told us, too. He'd smoke weed right before getting into class and, <laughs> and teaching us. And I was like, no wonder all your, all your shit is so <laughs> outlandish. Your man. class is all over the place. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah, it's great. He was a great teacher. But, but, man, I know what you're talking about, man. I mean, those communities. when, You know, that's the thing with Hawaii. You know, people come here expecting paradise and you know of course it is a paradise right. because there's a lot of beautiful beaches there's a lot of beautiful people here you know beautiful communities mm -hmm. there's a lot of aloha here but at the same time there's a lot of things that we pick up from other influences from mm -hmm. other states or even other countries japan is very close to us so i mean the, the thing about like um like world war Two, you know, the Japanese use cocaine. Yeah. You know what I mean? For and then that's that's why they <clears throat> they they got into like kamikazes, right? Because soldiers would take they would take cocaine in order and, to and and the first versions of crystal methamphetamine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was it was uh, it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, the, when the tourists come to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. They're buying an experience, mm -hmm. and we're selling an experience, mm -hmm. right? And on any given year, Hawaii's gross domestic product from tourism floats between like 45 and like 70% of Hawaii's total gross domestic product, right? Mm -hmm. We are designing this place to give them an experience, mm. you know? Yeah. And so they come here, and if we keep them in Waikiki and at Dole Plantation and, at, you know... At, at Koalina. At Koalina, yeah. right, Aulani Resort, Mickey you know? Mouse, you know? Right, right. <laughs> we can give them that experience, uh -huh. right? We, we can give them that right. experience. They mm -hmm. can come here, and, and they get a little piece of culture, mm -hmm. and they get, a, they get that weather and that, that humid you know air but it's cooled off by mm -hmm. the trade winds mm -hmm. and then they go home and they're like oh my god that was just amazing i saw a turtle i felt spiritually connected to it <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> i understood what amakua was i understood was. <laughs> what amakua was i think my amakua is that turtle i saw you know and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that uh -huh. and we sell them that and they give us money for that mm -hmm. you know but there's a community of people here who have to go to work and go home and go to work and go home and life is life and life comes with all of the mm. different array of ups and downs that come with it and so we as the people who supply that experience to them mm -hmm. we're sort of behind the curtain mm. you know we're behind a curtain and and there's you know you go backstage and there's guys in black shirts pulling ropes and moving sets into place and stuff yeah. and, and that's what we're doing for the tourists mm. you know and so this, no, we're the stagehands. We're the stagehands. All right. We're 100 percent the stagehands, mm -hmm. providing this experience for for these people that come here for a mm -hmm. week or so. You know. Yeah. But then we go home. We got to eat, and we got to go to Costco, and we got to, you know, and yeah. uncle, you know, uncle's an alcoholic, mm -hmm. and so and so is cheating on his wife, and you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like it's regular life, uh -huh. you know. Mm -hmm. And that that's exactly the the story as well. You know. Yeah. I mean, there's there's these things going on in the background, right? 
Right. But let's say like the Hawaii is a stage, right? right. We're the stage hands. But then you think in the backstage or even outside, there's there's homeless guys getting yeah. beat up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or there's there's drug addicts. There's people selling drugs mm-hmm. right in those streets, right behind this, you know, behind those that backstage. Right. And um, of course, the backstage. There's we could say like the governor is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he's the stage director you yeah. know what i mean yeah making uh, he's doing the promoting as well making sure people come in yeah. you know tourism right and and yeah people just come here they and you know honestly people tourists can come here and they can experience all those things colina and everything and yeah. not even see like kulihi yeah have a beach they could avoid makaha yeah even though and they should and they, and they should you know they, they, they should right it's, it's not what they're paying for right true, it's yeah. not what they're paying for you know <laughs> and it's like it's funny but like if if as far as like you know as far as my my book is concerned like mm-hmm. if you were a tourist and you ever come here and you see that guy tatted up on the moped mm-hmm. you know you're like you're, you're driving around and you see this this crazy scary looking guy tatted yeah. up on a moped <laughs> you know what i mean and the headlights yeah. hanging off and yeah. stuff and if you've ever wondered whoa that that what is that yeah you know what i mean that's a local but wow that guy looks that guy looks scary yeah. you know where, <laughs> yeah. where is he going what's he doing <laughs> you know and this this sort of this this book sort of tells the story of it humanizes mm. all of those people mm. you know and i i had a period of my time when i was headed down the wrong headed down the wrong path and i knew mm. all of those people mm. and now they're all now they're all gone mm. you know and there's nobody to tell them Mm. tell that story they're not bad mm. you know there's there's they're victims of circumstance there's mm-hmm. they're victims of abuse mm. they're mm-hmm. they're victims of drugs you know the drug mm-hmm. game the drug policies mm-hmm. and and then they just disappear mm. you know and i didn't think much about them i had gone i had left i had gone to new york and i was acting and i was in la and and when my son was born and i came back and i could i could hear all these ghosts Mm. You know, I would go down these streets and, oh, you know, sad. now I'm, I'm an, I'm an yeah. adult and I'm, I'm successful and I'm, but I'm walking down these streets and I'm thinking of these old friends and I'm, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're just faded. gone. They're yeah. faded. But I, I hear their voices, oh. you know? So I'm, um, and you know, that was the, that was the thing with the book too. It, it's like, I want to, and I was talking to m- my friend about the book and like I said, you're, you're catching me at a really fresh point while I'm mm-hmm. trying to figure out, you know, what I'm saying about it and, yeah. and, and what, I'm, what, it rac- what it actually is to me. And I was talking to some friends about it the other night and, you know, I want to talk about like all of the, the nuts and bolts of it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, oh, I, I took this from Hemingway and I took this from Jack London and mm. I took this from Dostoevsky and yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. I did all of this and uh-huh. I did all of that. And, but as I talk about it more, those things are true, but they're like, 25 to 30 percent of the truth Mm. you know like the real truth is that those voices just would not shut up Mm. you know and then the main character byron this motherfucker like (laughs) i'm I'm sorry (laughs) no 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 no. well i I just cussed it oh okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah he wouldn't shut up man he wouldn't let me sleep you know he's Mm -hmm. like hey you know what'd be cool okay i steal a car and then i'm driving down the road and then i'm I'm like dude shut up i need to go to (laughs) sleep man i'm I'm shooting tomorrow man it's like you know and then i'll be like you know what i'll write it down can you you let me sleep then Uh, and then i'll write uh it down and then and then the next day i'm like damn that's pretty good oh you know i I gotta i gotta put that i gotta i gotta write it Mm. in a way it's kind of like a memoir actually you know or or it's like it's a culmination of memoirs from you know, it's, people. it's interesting. Um, it's, I basically took my life and made a deal with this voice in my head, if that makes any sense. Like, mm. I, I told him, I said, look, if you're not going to shut up, I'll, I'll write it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I, I'll build you a whole world. Uh-huh. And I'll give you pieces of my life that mm. can act as, you know, plot devices and... and and characters and Mm -hmm. and i'll take care of all of the nuts and bolts of the story Mm. but you be honest with me Mm. you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna write down any 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 bullshit bullshit, be honest be honest Mm -hmm. with me you know he's a fake character Mm -hmm. so it's it's all bullshit Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah but there's truth 
there's universal truths when people start revealing themselves. And, mm. and when, the, when, when Byron started to reveal himself, I sound like a crazy person. No, no, no. Like it's a I, real I person. I like it. This is good. But when Byron started to reveal himself, uh -huh. anytime he would go off the track, I would say, remember the deal. Like, you know, I'm not going to turn you into some superhero that, you know, does mm. all of this. What, why would you do this? Uh -huh. what, what, why would you do this? <laughs> why are you saying that you did this? Mm. And then out of those questions would come these sort of deep, universal truths mm. you know mm -hmm. because we're all we're all sort of on a on a on a living level we're all sort of asking ourselves these questions that are universal between you and me you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 everybody that is like what is what is you know what what are we here what is the point of this and what yeah. is the point of that and mm -hmm. what is this emotion and why am i drawn to this and why do i keep doing this when i know i don't want to mm. you know and that's that's a big key to people who have had like you know, PTSD or people who have been, you know, abused as children. Yeah. You know, you. And they grow you, up, they grow up with that same trauma, that pain, you know. Right. You know, you talk about a bully, right? Byron, the main character in the, in the book is actually a bully. You know, mm. he's bullying kids at school, taking their money. And when he gets out of school, he's beating people up and he's selling drugs and he's stealing cars, you know. But when you read him, when you, when you go from chapter one, mm -hmm. By the time you get to where he's beating people up and stealing cars, like you completely understand him. And how could you understand mm. that crazy guy on a moped who looks psycho with the tats and the shit? Like, yeah. But you can. He's a real person. And some mm. of the stuff he does is, you know, that's what I was saying. It's a, like, it's a result of. It's a result of something that happened. Mm. You know what I mean? Of his past. Of his past. Mm. And we all have that. Mm -hmm. We all understand that. You mm. know? And, and, Trying to conquer that is a uh, is almost like a, a task that takes a lifetime, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like tattoos, I, I think like that that's a interesting illustration because like a tattoo, you know, some people just get it because maybe they were drunk one day and then they, <laughs> and then they ended up getting an upside down smiley face. Right, right, right. But then it's a story from their past that's still part of them, so it could be a a good night they had. But then. Another thing is someone could have got a tattoo because of a of a memory they they're trying to keep to them, but they they're kind of leaving it in the past. But they're they're putting it in on themselves because it's like, you know, it's still part of me. But I'm I'm put I'm putting it back in the chest. You know, I'm I'm leaving it. You know what I mean for for people to just view and say like, hey, you know what? This is what happened to me, and it's a, it's a part of me. But I, I don't. It's not a part of me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know. Like right now, it's just it's just here as a visual representation, right? And that you know that's an interesting thing with tattoos, or even like um, you know with when when you're talking about like when people come here and they, they view people and they, they see like maybe a guy wearing a lava lava and you, and you think like oh what is, what is that you know right but then, right you know it, culturally it's that that's that's something they could be holding on to like hey. This is, I wear this, you know what I mean? I'm right. proud of my culture. Right. And there's a deeper meaning to it because it's a part of who they are and it's a result of who they are today. You know? Right. Well, the, cult, the tattoo thing is, is can, can open Could, up something that's super deep. You know, when you mm -hmm. see somebody with their, with their set, yeah. right? A gang with their set, gang-affiliated tattoos, mm -hmm. right? And if you're not of that world, you would be like, why would you limit the rest mm. of your life but then you if you if you are hanging out with those guys mm -hmm. and you realize you know what that tattoo means that that tattoo is safety that tattoo buys them into a group of guys group who of guys. Would lay down their lives mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. you yeah, know a and, and he's it, it's a brotherhood mm -hmm. right and it is stapling him to that mm -hmm. you know but it's you you can't understand it unless you're in there mm. and then you go oh Oh, that, that's, that's that tattoo is important, mm, mm -hmm. you know. And then you get to like some of those guys that have like the teardrops on their eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, man, <laughs> dude. <laughs> but because those represent a, a kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. People don't know that. Yeah. No, well, now they know. <laughs> now, <they> know. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like they'll see that and they go, "Wow, that guy might be emo." Right. That's what I thought at first, but mm. then I understood it later on when life. And I was like, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. You know, there's a there's a deeper meaning to it. So. Man, I went to L.A. Like, I didn't really understand it much in L.A. Like, I, you know, growing up here, I, I hung out with, with some tough dudes and everything. And then when I went to I went to New York and went to L.A. and just sort of like exploring. I went to I went to New York kind of 
I went to New York to go to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, mm. you know, and to sort of like study the art, right? Study, okay. study acting and study theater. Oh, because nice. Because I was like, okay, I'm going to do theater. Like, uh -huh. you know, not movies, not TV. I'm going to mm. do theater. Mm. And when I got there, I was sort of like, it was almost like a double major. So I'm like studying theater, uh -huh. but then I'm also studying like hip hop. Oh, Because that's the birth of hip hop, uh -huh. right? And the, like the, when you go into like those gangs, like the Latin Kings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you're just like, oh, you know, this is an entirely different type of gang, mm -hmm. you know? And then the hip hop comes out of like these neighborhoods, like the Bronx, mm -hmm. Queens, Queens and Brooklyn. Yep. And, you know, mm -hmm. you go there and it's like, what a, um, what a, uh, like, uh, pilgrimage, pilgrimage to the heartland uh -huh. almost. Uh -huh. But I met these guys in LA a, a, a kid in LA and I wasn't I was I was working as a um, at a YMCA okay and running <laughs> running a program uh, run, running a program like uh, a couple of programs it was like teaching swim lessons because from Hawaii yeah and then yeah. I was also doing like a gang intervention and like working on like teaching people like poetry like but you take like Tupac lyrics right because oh, they know Tupac lyrics uh -huh. And then you can like branch them off into like Dudley Randall and Shakespeare and this and that. <laughs> yeah. And like you can show how they, you know, to start trying to, you know, w mm, wet the beak, right? Mm -hmm. Intertwine them. But I'd messed up because I had like the red lifeguard shirt, oh. right? And I, but I put a shirt over top because it was cold and I left there and I was on like Century and Vernon in mm. like South Central Los Angeles. Uh -huh. I went to a gas station. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, okay. I'm, I'm getting gas and this kid is like, real young kid. He's like 15, right? Mm -hmm. He's real smiley. He's like, Hey Holmes, where you from? Right, oh, <laughs> and geez. I was, but he was smiling. Oh. He was a kid, right? Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, well, I'm, oh. I'm actually I'm from Hawaii, and uh, I went to New York, and, uh, <laughs> and this and that. And he, and he was like, he's like, nah, fool, where you from? <laughs> and I was like, oh snap! Yeah. Like, and then I look and I see his friends over by the car. I was like, oh snap! <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, and he had the teardrop. Tattoos. Oh, he was wow. super young and he had the teardrop tattoos. Oh. And I was like, dang, okay, this kid's serious. <laughs> Wake up. I, I had a similar interaction. So I was in, um, I was in Anaheim. Actually, I was in Irvine, right? <clears throat> I had a red jacket on. Full red jacket. Oh. I was in Irvine. I, don't, I didn't even think about it until later. And I was, in, I was with some friends, right? I was, but then um, these guys got off the bus, right? Bloods, uh. and and I and I didn't realize it, but they came up to me and they're like, "What's up, blood?" And then they they shook my hand. They were doing we we're doing handshakes. I didn't even know how <laughs> I I knew their handshakes, but I was doing handshakes with them, and and then they're like, "Hey, man, I'll catch you later, dude." You know, <laughs> and then I was they're like, do you, "Do you know any of those guys?" I was like, "No," and I, and then I looked at my jacket. I was like, "Oh, bing," <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I didn't realize it because you know they had do rags. They had Mm -hmm. um, one of them had a gun. I saw one of them Whoa. had a gun. I, but I didn't think much of it. I was just like, what the hell is going on? Mm. But, you know, why are they approaching me? And right. then I was like, you know, that, that's gang activity, but it was just wearing a red, full-on red jacket. Right. I got rid of that red jacket. <laughs> no, I don't wear that anymore. <laughs> I was just wearing straight black jackets from now on. Right, right. But I No, mean, what's interesting about that, like going to, like, our growing up here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. our um, knowledge of that comes from, you know, New Jack City and yeah. like, you know, <laughs> uh, Boys in the Hood. And like, yeah. we, we really have not very much knowledge mm -hmm. of, of that like mm -hmm. growing up here. And then when you go in and you explore it, like it's, uh, it, you know, growing up here, it was sort of glamorized, right? In the, in yeah. the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And then you go there and like, I was just surprised to see South Central so spread out mm. like and then and then uh what the actual economic problems were like there's like it's a food desert mm. right and mm -hmm. then it's also like an education desert <laughs> right and then it's also like an employment desert oh, right it's God. just this stretched out area of land with all these houses in it and and nowhere to really go and i would meet kids that would you know basically live in like a seven block 
radius. And I met guys in New York that wow. way too. It's like seven blocks, never been out. Like you've only been out of the borough over to Manhattan and then back to the borough. Oh. You know, and then it, it reminded me of like kids growing up in Waipahu and Ever Beach, riding the bikes around and it's like never been out. Maybe went to Vegas once. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, I've been man, mainland, bro. Yeah. I'm, mainland. I'm in Vegas, you know. But it's, it's, like, it's like such, it's like tunnel vision. Right. You know, and, and they, they only see... That's that's kind of like going back to the tourist thing too. That that tunnel vision, they only see certain parts of Hawaii a certain way. But yeah, even there could be that one kid from Waipahu that just they they only see me Waipahu High School maybe. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. But then they maybe they just never explored outside Waipahu. It's right. just been they just been there their whole lives, and then they go to the winter side and they're like. Oh, what the hell is this? You know, <laughs> <laughs> they go to Kailua and then they're really culture shocked. Right, right. Like, wow, there's so many different people here. You right. Know? <laughs> and for Hawaii, for Hawaii, when you look at that type of thing, I, I, there's a term for it: uh, brain brain drain. Mm. Right, and it's mm-hmm. and it has it's 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 an economic problem because everybody with talent and everybody who's going to be successful or Mm -hmm. is successful is going to leave because there isn't any opportunities there. So Mm -hmm. they're going to leave to go to where the opportunities are. Right. And then that doesn't leave you with the people that say, Hey kid, you know, you could go to here and you Mm. could go there and let me help you fill out this paperwork so that you can go here and there. And, Mm. and just having those idols around town Mm -hmm. where it's like, Oh, well, so-and-so is a banker. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but he's, he's got dough, man. He just bought this thing. That's kind of cool. And, uh-huh. then, and then you're like, hey, I'm good with numbers. And then the banker guy is like, oh, really? You know, this, that. Oh, yeah, you know, you should get into banking. Them, right? right. You know, because here you could, you know, firefighter. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. There's, uh, uh-huh. You know, there's like, but all of the tech jobs definitely are leaving. Right. And a lot of the mm-hmm. high HR jobs leave. And then a lot of the like, so you're getting this brain drain. You don't get that many different um idols to look up to Mm. you know and uh that's a that's a that's a that's an interesting problem and it's nuanced and it's Mm -hmm. not there's not a simple answer to it but i i think that has a lot to do with the problem Mm -hmm. you know you need someone to look up to especially in some of these little pockets that we're talking about that Mm -hmm. isn't like the local you know isn't the guy that's five years older than you and got the car because he was selling you know yeah ice you know what i mean yeah yeah, like for Hawaii, it's, it's it's so like for music industry specifically, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the, that's one thing. <clears throat> like rap rap artists here, right? I I know. I would say I know a good bit of the people that rap here, right? And it's it's a lot of the guys that kind of stay in the same circle, but then they're kind of looking for opportunities to really expand out. But the same thing, they don't really have someone that they can cling on to and say, "Hey, that that's like someone I I want to." you know um like a, like an idol or someone that they can kind oh, of f- for hip for hip hop here um and what's the dude with the long hair he's funny uh he was with angry hawaiians um uh, angry Os- locals osna osna osnizzo uh, hey, shout, yeah. shout out to osnizzo <laughs> I, I did a an internet dive on that dude he was uh. cracking me up man <laughs> oh my god but serious skills um he cut his hair though now oh he did yeah he, oh. he has short hair now <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like when I was, when I was coming up, it mm-hmm. was like, you had to leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like you, you have mm-hmm. to leave, you know? And I, I remember trying to open for everybody and throwing them my demo tape. Mm. I chase ice, ice tea down the street, <laughs> throw my, throw my demo tape, you know? <laughs> he was trying too. Ice tea was trying. I told him cause I, I worked with him on a, on his show in New York oh, okay. and I told him the story. I was like, Hey, you remember coming to Hawaii? I threw my demo tape at you. <laughs> You just imagine you just chucking. I did, dude. Because cassette. he was running out the back. Uh-huh. He was trying to s- sneak out. It was uh-huh. at, at the Rhythm House, uh-huh. and and he, he snuck out the back. And I'm like, "Hey, yo, Ice!" <laughs> you know, he turns around. And he's like, "What's up, player?" And I was like, "Yo, my demo tape, man. I want you." He was like, ah, "He didn't want to be mean, you know." He's like, "He's like, he, he toss it to me." And I threw it. You know how the tape opens? Uh-huh. The tape opened and the tape went one way and the paper went the other way. And he was trying to be nice, but he like picked up the case. And he was like, ah. And he like jumped in his fly ass car and bounced. I was like, damn it. I told him, I told him later I was working with him on, on, uh, in, in New York. Okay. And I was like, yo, man, I threw my demo tape. He was like, I remember that. I was like, yo, you still got that tape? I was like, yeah, it's on CD now. <laughs> we, I can airdrop it to I you I can now. airdrop it to you now. Here, what's yeah. your name? Let me get this. 
That's funny. But I mean, that's like, you know, back in the days, that's the grind. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? To, to get your name out there. Because, like, like, even now, there's so much avenues to get, you know, there's YouTube. And even in the early stages of YouTube, right. it was so unknown to people. Like, they just right. see these, like, like I think five minute videos. You know what I'm saying? Right. But then, of course, now people are doing, like, freaking. Freaking but films you know, in there, you know, and I don't, I don't know, and you, you know, you talk to a lot of artists, and you know, uh-huh. I, this is just, this is just my thoughts on it, but like, mm-hmm. I think YouTube's good, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and I think the sort of the democracy of being able to put your music out is great, and then you you grow your fan base, you do the uh-huh. legwork. Mm-hmm. I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But one interesting thing that used to happen that I don't know. So what used to happen was you would have a small town and they would sort of create their own sort of scene right mm. so if you think about let's let's take seattle grunge music as an example right yeah, so I, I know what you, yeah you I know, know what, what i'm saying. getting at yeah. right so this mm-hmm. play they had their own thing mm-hmm. and they're like performing at their own little venues and mm-hmm. vibing off each other and they're mm-hmm. basically like fuck the industry yeah we, we like each other's music mm-hmm. and then after like eight years ten years of just playing for all of your local town mm-hmm. that sound becomes different Mm. Right, because you're vibing off of each other, and then and then when we get it, the consumer, the mm. music lover, you know I mean, do you remember when Nirvana hit? Yeah, <laughs> how different, like Nirvana, <laughs> Pearl Jam, like when uh-huh. these uh, Allison, when these when these bands hit, it sounded so out there. Mm-hmm. Like when Nirvana hit, you were like, what the hell? Because it was all like the big hair rock bands, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. you were just the sound was so different, mm-hmm. you know. And then when um, and then like even if you take like uh, San Francisco hip hop, mm. right? And then you're like listening to it, you're like, where is this? And then when the South came with their hip hop yeah. music, you're like, that's so different. Uh-huh. You know? Like Outkast, you're like, yeah. that's so different, uh-huh. man. Mm-hmm. And so that used to happen, but now there's not much, you know, you, you go on YouTube mm-hmm. and you, you put it to the world audience before you've sort of like been mm-hmm. in your own little local scene mm-hmm. sometimes, mm-hmm. you know? And when you look at a scene, like what there needs to be for a scene, there needs to be like, four or five venues, mm-hmm. right? There needs to be like... And, and that's the circuit right there. Right. You do that circuit. You do that circuit. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. When I got to New York, there was all these different places to like rap, mm-hmm. you know? And you, you go to these places and you battle and you rap yep. and you, you go home all hurt because uh-huh. you got just demolished by somebody and mm-hmm. you're like, what style was that? Oh uh-huh. my God. And then you try again and you go and mm-hmm. a month later you lick your wounds and you come back with a new style and you're mm-hmm. trying different things. And you know, as a scene, you, you grow in that scene before you even make a demo tape, mm-hmm. before you even put yourself on, on record, you, mm-hmm. you, you sort of battle hardened. <laughs> before you throw your demo tape, before you throw I, your tape iced at iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I was naughty by nature. I chased everybody. <laughs> everybody that came to Hawaii, I chased them and tried to give them my demo tape. Yeah. Did a trap called Quest, did they ever come here? Uh, I didn't so, see them I here. I feel like they did. I yeah, don't know. I, I, I might have missed that. I know naughty by nature, I chased Trudge to the hotel. <laughs> and I, used to, I, used to, I used to help them find greenery. So it, oh. would, it would help me get close. Okay. You know? Uh-huh. But I was telling the story to uh, DJ Ming One. Uh-huh. I was telling this story to him. Tretch, Tretch um, was, so I had rapped at Tretch's concert and they had pulled rappers. They're like, oh, any local rappers in Hawaii? Oh. And they pulled us up all, all on stage. Uh-huh. And, um, and my friend, like, and they, were, they were having us rap and the audience would, you know, cheer or whatever. Yeah. And um, my my friend got booed off the stage, poor guy. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, God, it was so bad. Like, people were throwing stuff. It was like, oh, it was a wild concert. Oh, okay. But I did pretty good. And then, um, and then they were like, yo, you know, what's your, you got a demo tape or whatever? And mm. I was like, the, the first night, I don't have it. Oh, right. Dang. I was like, dang. I was like, yo, I'll meet you guys at the hotel and, and I, I, I'll get you an ounce of weed, you know, mm. and this and that. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bribe. <laughs> right, right. I was like, yeah. but Tretch wasn't there. Oh, uh, right. Wow. He had gone okay. to rest. Like, and then this was like the middle to let him rest for a second. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then so went to the hotel and then I went to, I went up to Tretch and like, I thought he had like dissed me. Oh. You know what I mean? Cause I was like, I was like, yo, Tretch, man. Remember I rapped at the concert? He was like, 
I don't know you, dog. <laughs> you know? And then I thought about, like, what I look like in the lifted truck with, like, nine dudes from, like, Ever Beach and Wine Eye and stuff. And he's, like, standing there alone. And I was like, maybe he, maybe he was being smart. <laughs> like, Dang. You should have avoided it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what's up with these local dudes? I know these dudes. I don't man. know these dudes, man. <laughs> Where's my security at? <laughs> <laughs> One of them trying to <laughs> bribe me with his yeah, ass he's of weed. throwing weed at me in demo tapes. <laughs> yeah. Too much, man. Dang, I'm over here telling stories from like 25 years ago, <laughs> 30 years ago. But I, I mean, that's how it starts, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially for like when we were talking about communities, especially for like, I feel like communities, if they want to build like even like the film industry here, mm -hmm. they gotta like. Kind of like band together, create their own stuff here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like well, if you look at Ohina. Yeah. Um, you heard of Ohina, yeah. Ohina and NMG uh -huh. and Gerard and all those guys. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's their mission. Mm. You know what I mean? And and, and that that's working. Mm -hmm. That's working. And, you know, you, you have a couple of shows here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a big deal. It's a big deal that you have a place where they need people, mm -hmm. you know, and there's places to intern, there's places to work, there's places to be an extra, there's mm -hmm. places to be, there's all the different levels that you could do, mm -hmm. you know, and then once you have that, and what's, what's really nice about Hawaii right now, and what's really exciting about Hawaii right now is there is a training ground for actors, mm -hmm. and that would be in the theater. Right? Mm -hmm. And you have all these sort of community theaters. You have the Shakespeare Festival every summer. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Actors Group, Tag the Actors Group. You have Kumukuhua Theater that mm -hmm. does all original plays and original works and hires all local actors and local directors. Mm -hmm. And then you have Manoa Valley Theater. You have Diamond Head Theater. You have this new one, Koa. Mm -hmm. um, Hawaii, Hawaii Theater. That's right. Yep. Hawaii Theater. And so you have these places where you can go do community theater, do shows mm -hmm. for a couple of years and break your teeth in. And then you can audition for, you know, NCIS and, and mm. the, the movies that come here. And then you have a shot because mm -hmm. they, you know, there's a tax, there's a, um, I don't know if it's still in place, but they had to hire five local actors an episode. And the last time I checked for mm. as per union regulations so they have to have five local hires mm. right and uh you might want to double check that because that might have changed in the last couple of years but yeah, yeah. That, that was part of the deal of shooting a show here in uh, hawaii uh -huh. so you have a shot every episode oh. right every episode they have to hire a certain amount oh, you know okay. and so there's a shot to like there's a place to go there's a goal mm -hmm. you know and then that's for the actors and then for all of like directors and assistant directors and lighting and gaff and grip and all of those that's all jobs, mm. you know, mm -hmm. you can get in and then you can start working and, mm -hmm. you know, so that creates a local industry and that creates that, that, that pocket that you and I were talking mm, about, right? Yeah. Where then you start getting stories and then you've got like all of these, sh you've got Ohina mm. short films, you've got Made in Hawaii short film festival, mm -hmm. and then you've got feature length Hawaii, films, yeah. HIF, uh, Hif mm -hmm. which is the big one at every mm -hmm. year. Did you catch anything this year? I I caught the win in the reckoning. Me too. Uh, that, that was, was like a, you have to, right? Yeah, like, you, you like, have <laughs> to. I mean, they played it so much, and I, it was amazing. It was great. Uh huh. It was great, mm -hmm. and like the more we do that, you know, every year, you know, there's a couple of projects coming out next mm -hmm. year that are mm -hmm. just gonna, are just gonna. The more you do that, then all of a sudden you got an industry that is sort of growing, like New Zealand's <laughs> film industry. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's it's creating that that pocket like mm -hmm. you were saying creating that pocket here because i feel like there was a drought sometime even even before covid i think there was a drought there was i mean there was productions like parts of the caribbean there was a like king kong that was here of course there was jurassic park right but then like <clears throat> i feel like now there's like so much more creators now right coming into their own and then they they kind of found their groove and they're like Let, let's let's figure this out now and then they're figuring it out and they're producing it and they're creating it now. So. And there's a couple things helping, like technology getting cheaper and yep. cheaper. Mm -hmm. you, know, the, the, you know, to do a production, I mean, if you got $5,000, you can do something really yeah. nice. Yep. You know, $5,000 and friends mm -hmm. and you can do something really nice. Mm -hmm. If you think it out and you really do have talent and you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know. I, I've watched them. I've watched stuff cheaper than that. I've watched stuff that's <laughs> done for like $1,000 and I'm like, oh my dude this is mm -hmm. beautiful mm -hmm. you know and you got to do you got to you got to do the work you got to like if you if you got a film in your head you got a story in your head mm -hmm. 
I mean, you, you got to do the work. Mm-hmm. You got to you got to make those connections. You got to help other people out. You mm-hmm. know, you got a project. Work on 10 other people's projects for free. Mm. You know what I mean? Bring a cooler filled with water and drag it from the van to the thing and then back mm. on everybody's film and help out. You know, mm. while you're there, meet people and then talk about what you're doing. Mm. You know, mm. you, you lend a hand and then people come and lend a hand on your film. And then mm. we, we help each other out and we, we make yeah, good you stories. create that pocket. That's right. You right. create that pocket. Uh-huh. And then the, that noise is going to, I mean, of course, we're on, we're on an island. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or a series of islands. Right. But then that, that noise is going to spread out a lot more and then that's why we got guys like The Rock or Bruce, Bruno Mars that or Jason Momoa they got roots to Hawaii but then the thing is like people see like oh okay like Hawaii let's let's check out Hawaii let's see what they're doing right mm-hmm. and then they see we've been building stuff mm-hmm. and then once they see that then it's it, it's a snowball effect right mm-hmm. it's just gonna keep rolling mm-hmm. at that point so yeah yeah and you know cause there's the Hawaii International Film Festival is great but you know once you, start, once you start getting and doing the festival circuit, right? After, mm. after your film is mm-hmm. there and you do the festival mm-hmm. circuit and all these other buyers, right? Mm-hmm. They start thinking about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They start going, wow, this is another film from Hawaii, Sundance, mm-hmm. right? This is mm-hmm. another dope film from Hawaii, mm-hmm. you know? And there's so many different stories too, right? And for, mm-hmm. I think a couple years ago, that was kind of a thing like where every story needed to be, every story kind of felt you know, we're showing the world, um, I don't, I don't want to, what's the way to say it? Like, there's so many different stories in Hawaii, mm. you know? And if you're a storyteller and you find out, you find the stories that kind of come through you, mm-hmm. that use your language. And like a unique a unique, unique sense. A unique sense. Yeah. Right? If, if you find what your f- flavor is mm-hmm. and you find out what your voice is and you make a story that is yours, mm-hmm. then it's not, you know, the story that everybody thinks should come out of Hawaii, mm-hmm. you know? And then it has that, that real feeling to it, right? If it's the voice in your head, like we mm-hmm. were talking about earlier. Yeah. You know? Right. It's, it's not like it's cliché something that you, you bo- we were talking about Bruce Lee earlier. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and that's kind of the same thing too. Like if you think about it, I'm going to use culture examples, right? So, <laughs> so you learn, you learn something, right? Mm-hmm. You learn something. Let's just make sure this, this glass is empty, right? It's empty. <laughs> right. You learn the fundamentals of it. Right. Maybe you learn that you, you get ideas for stories. You understand how a story works. Right. And then you start to learn a bunch of it. Mm-hmm. You know, then you then you start to learn like really directing or, or producing or gaffing or let's say like you know other parts of a film, right? And then you you start watching a bunch of films and you get really a lot of inspiration. And then with Bruce Lee, he always talks about this nothingness phase, mm-hmm. where you just forget about everything, and you you ingrain your film then becomes ingrained in you to you. So right. then the idea. Like you were saying, it's it becomes a part of you, and then you find your voice, and then then that's where that sweet spot where that film's gonna right. just go crazy. Right. Like, oh. if, if you immerse yourself in storytelling, right, the devices and the foreshadowing and the, mm-hmm. you know all that stuff becomes second nature. Yeah. So when you do hear a voice, or you do hear a story, mm-hmm. and I don't know where it comes from when mm-hmm. it's right. Mm-hmm. All I know is that if you're trying to manufacture it, mm-hmm. it never is very good. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if you're sitting down and you're saying, <laughs> I want to tell, you know, I want to tell this, I want to tell a story that you're going to like, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about what you are going to like. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I want to tell this story that's going to be cool and this and that. And, and, and it, it, it never really, that never really works very well, mm-hmm. you know? But if it's, it's almost like if you have to tell the story, mm. like the story is like coming out and you're, you're trying to, use all of the techniques just barely like being yeah. able to put put like channel it into oh, oh that would be great for oh it's coming out okay this is foreshadowing yeah. uh, you know this this story would be great for this part you mm-hmm. know and it's like mm-hmm. it's coming out it's mm-hmm. like it's just spilling out mm-hmm. and then you're you're putting it in a in a in a place if you're mm-hmm. if you're trying to manufacture it it almost never works but mm-hmm. when it's inspired then and and then you're using your skills mm-hmm. you know but you have to you have to practice mm-hmm. you know it's, it's mm-hmm. like when i was when i was heavy into hip hop when I first started writing, I'm 
imitating. You know, I'm imitating Ice T. Mm. You know, I'm I'm imitating LL Cool J. Mm. I'm I'm imitating Black Thought. You know, mm. and I'm I'm like I'm imitating it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like I've got all these rhymes that sound like all these different people, mm. and I mm -hmm. can't find my your voice, my voice. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden on one track you're like, oh, what is that? <laughs> and that and that's the rhyme that came out in like ten minutes uh, you know you just sat down and it just came out in 10 uh -huh. minutes you know like mm -hmm. whoa that's that's a whole song it mm -hmm. just came right out mm -hmm. that's, that's the one that's that's when you become rap that's when you become it you know right and that that's the same thing bruce lee talks about mm -hmm. you know you, yeah. you become the martial arts it's not you you learning the martial arts then the martial art right. is that's you you become one right that's what we were talking about like with theater yeah right mm -hmm. so you're, you're acting and there's all this stuff, right? You have mm -hmm. to, you can't turn your back this way. Mm -hmm. You put the cup down on this line. Yeah. You're supposed to say this in this direction. Uh -huh. You're supposed to laugh on this line. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to, all of those things you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you have to think about them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have to remember to do them. You mm -hmm. can't just get lost in your own head and then and not remember to do them, right? right? You have to remember to breathe correctly because mm -hmm. you're good. You know, mm -hmm. the next line is actually a full minute before you can breathe again. Mm -hmm. So you got to say this whole line. So you got to make sure you take a nice breath right before it and yeah. then say <laughs> that line, right? <laughs> it's all these little teeny details, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. If you are versed in the skills, mm -hmm. then all of that stuff, all of that noise can disappear. Mm. And all of those thoughts of what you have to do when and all of that are so ingrained mm. that there's you nothing become theater you become it you you right. you, you you're in those i guess it's like the zone right the sports mm -hmm. zone right yeah, yeah the sports zone. the sports zone right <laughs> that's kind of like um so like i've been i've been doing college screen for i think a year at this point or but i've been learning a lot of techniques and everything but yeah. you know you know i learned of course the fundamentals right and then i get into the we learned a, a bunch of techniques disarms we learned a a bunch of different things but then i also learned theory so you know with disarms there's a certain way your wrist goes mm. and it's it's just the physical limitation so when you bend it this way and for a long time it you'll um eventually loosen your grip on things mm -hmm. and we could try it later <laughs> of course we could try it yeah well, I'll i can show you but then um so then you understand disarms are kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. Every disarm is going to be like this. Right. But that also applies to like elbows or shoulders and knees, different joints, right? Right. But then, um, so that's, that's just theory, of course, at that point. And then also there's movement too. But then I came into this space where I'm just kind of like, I understand all those things. Right. And I don't know how I'm doing it. Right. But uh, I can... I can feel the energy with it and right. I, I know what I'm going to do next. Right. And then that's the, that's, that's the exactly same, it. The same thing. No, I'll have, I'll have nights where I get off stage mm. and I don't even, I was like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's it. The whole thing was like five minutes. It's like two hour play. I'm like, whoa, we're finished, you know? And then I'll have nights. And that's why I was saying why well, I have to get, I have to get back on stage because uh. it's been too long. Cause if I mm. wait too long, then I'm thinking about all the things, uh, you know, I'm yeah. thinking about, I got to put my cup down on this line. <laughs> I have to sit down on this line. I have mm. to, and then my performance is wooden and then I know it's wooden. Mm, so then I become, push, it becomes structured. It becomes, it, it becomes a set of things that I've remembered to do uh, as opposed to, you know, being the character, being the character and all of the character uh, work and stuff, you know, and there's a set, you know, it's, it's funny between, between stage and film, mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff you, you don't really need to. It's what's important is different. Mm. You know, it's it's um, it's they're, they're the same thing. It's like skateboarding and surfing. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would say that theater is like surfing mm -hmm. and film is like skateboarding. OK. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. you, you have to have balance for both of them, uh -huh. you know, but you don't have to know how to paddle. Yeah, a different set of skills. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. They're a different set of skills, but they sort of their underlining moments are sort of very similar. Mm -hmm. And you can you can transfer back and forth between mm -hmm. the two. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to go from theater to film than from film to theater. Mm -hmm. Because there's all of the stuff about like reading the audience, right? Like mm -hmm. so like skateboarding to surfing would be like reading the waves. Yeah. You know, knowing yeah. the ocean and knowing how to adapt and mm -hmm. knowing, you know, the skateboarding you some improv there. Right. Yeah. So a little bit of 
And it's even if you're not going to improv, even if you're doing like Shakespeare, you're not going to mm. improv Shakespeare, yeah, right? Yeah. But you're going to be in tune with the audience and know that like, you know, I got to hold this the reaction, beat, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a thing called earning a pause, right? Mm. So it's like you got to go from beat to beat at a certain speed and you'll know if the audience is with you, mm -hmm. right? If they're not with you, you pick up the pace, right? So they don't get bored and uh -huh. see if you can win them back again before the next big dramatic moment or the oh, next thing. And you're like winning them back, winning them back. And then do you have them? Because mm. if you have them, you can, you know, hold this skull for two seconds longer. Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because yeah. they're so with you. They're, they're yeah, they're invested. At they're that invested. Point. Oh. And if they're not, you need to just pull it out, look at it, put it back, oh. you know, or else you'll lose them completely, mm. you know? And there's like little, there's like a hundred little things like that, oh. you know? And, uh, in film, the most important thing is, is authenticity, right? Making mm. the moment so you're Count. making yeah. the moment like very real because uh -huh. the camera's like right in your face. Mm. And if you're, if you're, I'm surprised. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, fuck, this dude is, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, dude, we're going to do this again. Like, so there's a lot of improv in film just to make it authentic, just mm. to make it like a, a real thing. So you like improv a moment just because it really happens, you mm. know? It's like if we're doing a scene and it's not working, I could just like spill the cup. Mm. You know, and then you're in real life going to go, <gasps> you know, like that. And yeah. then that moment is like very real. Mm -hmm. And, then, you know, the apologies and all of that. And then all of a sudden we continue the scene. And then that yeah, whole scene is very right? real, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you do something shocking or do something, that's a bad example. But, you know, that's 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 what's important in film is, mm. is keeping that authenticity, keeping that moment real, uh, you know, because uh -huh. they're trying to catch lightning in a bottle in every take, in every scene mm. so that the whole thing has life to it. Mm. And that life is different than the life that is on, in the theater stage because the theater relies on, on a couple of different devices, mm. you know? How do you get to that point of authenticity? Let's say like on a, on a set, like you're, you're playing a character, maybe someone from Inhumans, right? But right. then you're, you're transferring like, let's say Inhumans to like maybe someone from Last Resort or something. Like that. Right. Um, well, there's, that's, um, you know, you're looking at um, what the character is, right? Mm -hmm. Like who, who he is and what he is. Mm -hmm. and, then you're, and then you're trying to like build his life out, mm -hmm. right? So very much uh, the same way, remember I was saying in the book, I gave that voice my life, right? right? Mm -hmm. I, I gave it the setting, mm -hmm. right? So you gave it the world. I gave it my world, mm -hmm. right? And I said, okay, this is your world. And what would you do in this world, mm -hmm. right? So you, you do a, a very similar thing for a character. It's the, the world is written out, mm -hmm. and you kind of do it in reverse, right? It's like, okay, I'm going to give you my voice, and this is this world. Oh. So it's like under, these set of, under this set of criteria, mm -hmm. you, know, you, have, you know, you have one leg. <laughs> you, you, you like pasta. I don't like pasta personally. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. You, you, like, you, know, mm -hmm. you like these things. You don't like these things. You watch McCall. And then now I'll pour everything else that's me into that, into that mold mm. and then try to, try to see what the reactions would be and what, what, would, the, what would the legitimate reactions be, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then try to be, um, try to operate out of that place of nothing oh. in, in every take, oh, okay. right? So like in, in every take, I need to know my lines. I need to know everything so ingrained that when when action is called i'm not thinking what's my next line i put my cup down here i turn on this you know i'm i'm really talking and i'm mm. really listening and i don't know what i'm going to say so when you say your line i mm. don't know what i'm going to say you mm. say it and i i, I don't know mm. you know and i said what would i say and then when i open my mouth hopefully i know it well enough that the lines come out but what's Naturally. going on in oh. inside of me is not thinking my next line is this i'm, I'm thinking why did he ask me that what is, uh, what's my answer then? Uh -huh. And then I say my answer from that place. Based on that, that place of, once, once you put that voice into that, right. that world that's already been created, but then you're, right. oh, that's, that's an interesting take on that. Yeah, uh, and then I, there's, like a, there's like a thing that I call layers, right? Like how many mm -hmm. layers are you putting on the character that mm -hmm. aren't you, mm -hmm. right? So like if the character has an accent, you know, that's a heavy layer, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then if the character has an accent, and he's got a and he's got a drug addiction or some sort of physical mm. impairment that mm -hmm. so now that's two layers 
right? Mm. I get scared when you go beyond like three layers, like mm. three layers from me, you know, that's scary. So like the work that like Daniel Day Lewis does mm. is mind boggling. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll be like five layers in. Uh -huh. Or you even know, what, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, he's going like 10 layers he's deep. He's going like 10 layers <laughs> deep, dude. What is that, Inception? He's got a dream within a dream <laughs> within a dream within a dream. <laughs> he's, he's like so far deep, uh -huh. you know? Mm -hmm. And then and that's another style of acting. That's another style of acting, you know? Mm. Um, and I haven't, I'm not, oppo I'm not opposed to, to that. I, I just haven't had the opportunity to have, to have that type of, the, the closest that thing challenge. I did to that was uh, I did a movie called Story Game mm. um, in Japan, and I had to I played a um, character who was raised in Japan, as wow. even, but uh, you know the soldiers come over there, and uh -huh. they'll bang a, you know what I mean, and then yeah, leave, yeah, and yeah. then so my character was a um, was a businessman, and uh, so I spoke Japanese, you know what I mean. I grew up in Japan, and so now we're adding layers, wow. right? So I had yeah. to I had to uh -huh. I had to learn Japanese phonetically for mm -hmm. the lines that I was speaking, and then I had to like uh, get that disposition. And then he's a businessman, and he's a little cowardly, and he's so I'm, I was like four layers deep. Wow. On that. Oh my. But gosh. I had I had time, and mm. you know, and that's where, you know, the higher up you get. And the bigger parts you get, you, you get more time because there's more on your shoulders, right? Mm -hmm. So that director, Jason Lau, flew me to Japan early mm -hmm. and we rode the train and rode, did the, you know, and he told me the world that I would be living in. And then I got to go home and I got to work with some dialect coaches and, mm -hmm. you know, and then fly there again and, and, and got to work one on one with that director over and over on every shot, every take and mm -hmm. like really immerse. And that's mm. the closest that's the closest I've ever been to being like close to four, five, six layers deep. Oh. I would definitely do it again, but it's all consuming. Mm. You can't be balancing three, four, five projects at yeah. once, you know? Which is the life of an actor, right? What's the next thing? What's yeah. after this? Okay, I finished shooting this, what's after this? So you're mm -hmm. on set on one thing reading reading your stuff mm -hmm. for the next thing and mm -hmm. or else you don't get any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's weird too, because like yeah, if you're if you're dealing with a character that's six layers deep, let's say like three different roles, three different mm -hmm. things, you could lose yourself in that too as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's that's pretty crazy. I've done that on stage. I was uh, about like eight or nine years ago. I was doing three. So I was doing. Uh, I was working for the Honolulu Theater for Youth, mm -hmm. and we were doing like you know we did like a children's play, then we did like a high school play. And then I was also doing a show at the actors group mm. and rehearsing for another show. So we were doing two shows in rep and then rehearsing for another show mm -hmm. and then doing a show. So I was performing like th two shows, two shows in the daytime and then going and performing another show at night. And there were three different shows <laughs> and it was, it was mind boggling. And then when I was like, and Jeez. not enough, not much sleep. Uh -huh. You know, so living on the west side and then commuting into mm. town back and forth while they're yeah. doing construction. Oh, and so not, not, a lot of sh not a lot of sleep. And I would be bowing and I'd be like, what show is this? You know, I'd be like, what, oh. what play is this? Wow. And each of the characters were like two layers deep. So they both had accents. Oh, my god! Different gosh. accents and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. like, which show is this? Mm -hmm. But. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy, right? That's like. We could just black out everything at that point. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> like, oh my god, what, what show is this? <laughs> when when you were in um uh, theater school, how many shows did you guys do like in in total? Like when you were there? Oh, uh, in New York. Yeah, in New York at the conservatory. Um, oh, we did a lot. We did a lot. Well, we would go. We would the first first couple semesters. You do a lot of scene work, mm -hmm. and you do a lot of because there's a lot of like being able to like so when you're looking at a scene like there's beats and there's timing and there's there's pacing and then there's like foreshadowing and then there's subtext mm -hmm. and so they teach you how to like read a scene and sort of know what the beats are and how to find these things mm -hmm. and and that that's the main work and then we would do show after show after show and you'd have these theater professionals sort of sit there and talk to you, mm. you know, and, and teach you things, mm. you know? So I, I, I learned, I learned a lot there. Yeah, I, I learned a lot. Like 
I thought I was the shit coming from here. Uh, I was doing like some acting around town. Uh-huh. Then I went to New York like, yo, this is going to take like six weeks. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm at this school. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm the man. Uh, and then I went and saw uh, a view from a bridge with Anthony LaPaglia. Oh. Right? oh, my God. So we got free tickets to go see Broadway shows. Right? Okay. Okay. So we go there. That's incredible. Wow. Dude. First of all, it was a matinee. On like, <laughs> it was a matinee on Wednesday, which are matinees. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so, so I'm like, I'm, I'm going there and I'm sitting here and I'm watching Anthony LaPaglia, uh-huh. and he's 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 killing it. He's doing like things I've never seen before, mm. and I just know enough to know I don't know how to do that. Oh, right. And I'm just sitting there like, yo, what am I thinking? I'm from Hawaii. Uh-huh. Like, I've completely deluded myself. Mm. I have delusions of grandeur because I'll never be able to do that. Mm. Right? I was just like, that is insane. That's so insane. I, they said that, you know, a lot of the actors and stuff are like really nice to you if you're in the acting school and you can go say hi to them and ask mm-hmm. them a question and say you're mm-hmm. a new actor or whatever. So I wanted to meet him. So we wait backstage. The guy comes out and he says, hey, I'm really sorry. Anthony would really love to talk to you. But he has walking pneumonia right now. And he's got another show tonight, so oh. he can't. He's got to rest, That's right? Crazy. And I thought to myself, I've seen the best work I'd ever seen, uh. and he had walking pneumonia, uh. and he has two shows that day. Mm. I was ready to go home. <laughs> I was I was ready to go home. I was like, Just, I'm never gonna be able to <laughs> to get to that <laughs> to yeah. get to that level. Uh. That was insane. That is insane. Yeah, but I mean, like you were saying, you you develop your own voice later on as well once you. Yeah, I mean that takes time. It takes time. It takes yeah. it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. It there's um, uh, we're getting really into the weeds about technique, but there's a there was um, Dan Daly was telling me uh, in a scene like we're doing scene work, and mm-hmm. he tells me he's like I'm I'm doing a scene and the other person's talking, right, and I'm listening to the other person talking, and he mm-hmm. stops the scene and he says uh, he says what were you doing in that scene? And then I was like, yo, I, w- I was listening. <laughs> I, w- I was okay. listening, right? I was uh-huh. listening to the person talking. He goes, uh-huh. yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I saw that you were listening because uh, you, were, you, were, you were really listening. You were leaning over and you're listening. And I was like, yeah, uh-huh. I, was, I, was, I was listening. And he goes, what are you doing right now? And I was like, I'm listening to you. He's like, well, how come you're not doing this? Mm. Right? I was like, oh, this one. The fine tuning. Yeah, right. you know, so... That, that, and it's just like <laughs> a thousand things like that. Oh, wow. It's a thousand things like that. That's, that's mind-blowing. That's, actually, that's really interesting. I've learned something, actually, <laughs> from, just from talking. Because <laughs> 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 uh, my, my wife and I, we, we um, recently directed a film for a 72-hour film challenge. Oh, nice. So oh, I'll, show you, I'll show you after. I would love to see it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a short film. It, it had to be five minutes long, but we, we made a director's cut which is like maybe five and a half minutes long. Right. Uh, just because there was 30 minutes we had to, or 30 seconds we had to cut out just to make that cut. But, um, but yeah, I mean, l- listening to you, I, I can see what I, I want to do next time. For right. Like future, for future things. That right, I'm right. Like, um, putting up, so. Yeah, if you can for, you know, like, if there's like two, because like directing and film, two, two set, like, Working with the actors mm-hmm. and making them feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, actors are very delicate. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they, yeah. they come on with like, so like, like so much of it is like providing a place where um, it feels like you're playing. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like anything they do is going to be fine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is going to be fine. We'll do it again. Mm-hmm. You know, this is, we got all day, even of if you course. don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's got to feel like you got all day. Mm-hmm. It's got to feel like, oh, we're just playing around. We're goofing mm-hmm. off. We're going to mm-hmm. do something really weird and fun and weird. Yeah. And providing that atmosphere is like 75% of it, mm. you know, which is hard in the 72 hour film challenge, right? Because you got time. Well, we, we, we did. I think we did a really good job because we, that, that was my thing. My, my whole thing in it was. Like I learned, well, that's what I picked up from like learning martial arts and yeah. like, learning even music and stuff like that is um, if you can find a way to build an environment that's fun, yeah. I- including with podcasting too. Like right. that's whole, the whole part of the nothingness thing. I think right. like getting to that part of it is understanding how to make a positive environment 
are making it really like making it feel like people it, they forget about what they're doing right in that moment right? right so when you say that that's something that i was really pushing for yeah the set too like we we just have to make it really fun inviting you know have you know make it a good time cause, yeah you know and then like make it feel natural because <clears throat> then when they when they leave and then they see the performance they're gonna go like damn that's what we did you right. know what I mean? <laughs> we did that i didn't even feel like that we were right. i thought we were just having a party you yes know I mean? yes 100 <laughs> percent so, yeah play um, and make believe right exactly. like just like oh you know it'd be cool mm -hmm. and like every idea is welcome mm -hmm. you know what i mean like mm -hmm. we might not use it you yeah. know but definitely tell me what you're thinking yeah you know mm -hmm. that'll be dope mm -hmm. well, i can see where you're coming from you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um, that doesn't work for this moment because of this this and this mm -hmm. but uh more tell me some more ideas right. you know again let me know more mm -hmm. you know and then or you know that's that's so that's so big that's mm -hmm. that's 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 the environment that I've done my best work in. Oh. Uh, you know? And, yeah. Cool. I will remember that. Yeah. Of course. All, all the time. I mean, that's... The, I do that... I try to do that all the time in podcasting, too, because it's, like... That's why I build a whole set like this. And, yeah. And because, like, I try to make people forget. There's three cameras. There's two lights. There's a whole station on the... <laughs> oh yeah it's like we're in inception you know oh, what i mean snap. what have i been talking about <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean like they look at the set and then they they forget there's a big there's a big mic right in right, front right, of right. Stuff like that but it's like you know just having people enjoy themselves that's the whole thing about like podcast like if i gave someone advice for podcasting that's exactly what i would give mm -hmm. is um create an environment that's just fun and helps people forget about that they're recording something right you know right. because i forget that i'm recording something when i'm doing this right you know what i mean i like sometimes i don't even know if it's recording at all actually <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like sometimes i have notes and i have notes here and i forgot all about my notes mm -hmm. I, I haven't used any of them yeah because i don't have to sometimes right it just becomes it's ingrained it's like it's a conversation it's storytelling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's something that it, it's it's another form of art as well. You right. know what I mean? Which is I I like because I I'm a an accountant in the day, so Oh yeah. You know, completely different. Yeah, that's like like I'm, juxtaposed. Yeah, I'm using a different parts of my brain that <laughs> don't have to apply to this, but it's you know, accountant in the day and then I do podcasting at night. So it's like it's that the du duality, you know yeah. what I mean? So Yeah. Um but you know that's the whole thing with podcast i of course with acting as well it's the creating that environment and then immersing yourself into that environment and saying right. wow we did that you know right, <laughs> you right. black out and you're like wait we were filming <laughs> 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 and i i think that's a it's a beautiful thing yeah 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 and it, this the podcasting is just blown up mm -hmm. and i i i find it really interesting how much I'm getting from podcasts mm. like there's so many different podcasts about so many different things. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like a playground. Yeah. Like you could just, anything you're interested in, there's a podcast about <laughs> yeah. it and they just go deep into it. <laughs> just like, dang, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like mine is sports. I love sports podcasts. Yeah. I can listen to that all day on, yeah. actually or, or, or true crime, true crime. Yeah. Yeah. True mine is a uh, philosophy. Wow, okay. Like all of these philosophical, like human behavior podcasts yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That's like, awesome. Just, just way deep in the weeds. That and like physical, like physical health and physical longevity and mm. like uh, how the body works and mm. like all of those, like Huberman Labs and mm. like all of these, like, and you're just like all the information from like the top scientists uh. and then they have other top scientists on. And then they talk about some like one little piece of like like dopamine. How does that work? <laughs> yeah. Testosterone, testosterone. How does that work? And then there's a whole podcast about dopamine and testosterone. How uh. do they work together? And you're just like, oh, this is. And my wife is like, what are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up! I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna live forever. I know about dopamine. <laughs> I've created the limitless pill. <laughs> right, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. So uh, real, real quick before we kind of end off, I, I, I want to ask you what's next because that's something that actors, like you were saying, you oh, know, yeah. actors go from here to here. What's always next for well, you? What's for next? me, I've paused everything. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing this book. Come the beginning of this next, next year, I've got 
readings planned all around town. Mm-hmm. Um, and on um, February 7th, I'll be at the Pacific Club doing a reading. Okay. Um, I'll be at, the, awesome. I think, Averton Theater um, doing a reading with uh, Akemi's The Popolo. Okay. Have you, have you heard about them? I don't, um, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, she's got this great group that's sort of uh, getting all of the African Americans that have grown up here or live here and getting them together mm-hmm. and, and sort of like, uh, you know, because we're all sort of spread out. Yeah. You know, uh, mixed in with o- other communities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's kind of like getting everybody together so that we know that we're together. And because the main character in this book is half black, half white. Yeah. You know, growing up in Hawaii. And uh, so we're going to do um, a little work together um, in February for Black History Month. Wow. Uh, probably that's at incredible. the Aberton Theater. And, uh, and I'm trying to um, promote the book, mm-hmm. promote the audio book, and um, probably sometime around next summer, I want to start um, planning on shooting it. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a couple of pieces that I could shoot as short films mm-hmm. that would be awesome. And then I've written an entire uh, series, a limited series, two oh, seasons. Wow based on the book Uh and so i'm sort of shopping that and looking at uh, the possibility of doing that in sort of um, a local style like how a lot of these short films and a lot of these independent films are shot on the island Mm -hmm. i've got pretty good relationships with people and i'm going to see if i can try to get that together and shoot shoot that that would be awesome i mean that's that's best case scenario that's the plan that's shooting for the stars yeah hey let let us know if you need help man oh yeah uh, definitely oh yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 ripe for that. The, it's 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 written. Mm, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, hey, I gotta thank you for coming on the show and, and talking about your book, talking about us, about like yeah, we went all over the place. We went all over the place, but <laughs> I I loved it. I loved the stories and that you shared, and then of, of course your knowledge about theater and and film. I think it's so valuable what so, you learn, and then that what you're sharing because it's. I think people here, they, they should know about that. You know what I mean? If they want to be an actor or they want to. And, and there's, there's places that yeah, need places. actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, tag the theaters group, uh, the actors group, mm-hmm. Kumukohua Theater, um, Manoa Valley Theater, uh, KOA, Koa mm-hmm. Theater. Like, they, they need actors. So if you're mm-hmm. thinking about being an actor, you can go, you can audition, you can get a part, you can get on stage, you can start learning. Mm-hmm. You can learn all of the things that I talked about. They're mm-hmm. easy. One year, you have mm-hmm. it. And then uh, anything else you want to shout out, is like your book and then your, your yeah. IG page? Uh, yeah, ConcreteRainbow.com. ConcreteRainbow.com. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. ConcreteRainbow.com. ConcreteRainbow.com. Concrete Rainbow. Got to sit in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Concrete Rainbow. <laughs> yeah, check it out. And uh, we're running deals all the time. The audio book is ridiculous. It's mm. got crazy talent from all over the island. The mm. audio book is... I is, had a Beyonce. It is ahead of me. Be- yeah, how's that? I'm ahead of Beyonce. I'm ahead of J. Cole. We are burning up the. We are burning it up right now. I don't know, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm playing it down because I don't want to be that guy. But I'm, oh, but, but you ahead of Beyonce, man. Yeah, ahead of Beyonce. Man. What is going on in this ahead world? Ahead of J. Cole. I mean, that's <laughs> that's the J. Cole lot. Actually. Yeah, man. I'm I'm super excited about how hot this book has become over mm. the last month, mm. and and I don't think it's going to stop. I'm mm. super excited. So, you know. Check it out and tell me what you think. I'm, I'm accessible, you know, on Instagram and all the, all the social media. You go to uh, ConcreteRainbow.com. There's links to everything. There's links to me. You know, I'm accessible. You read the book. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of heavy stuff in there. You, you want to you talk to me about it? You know, hit me up. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a real dude. I'm just chilling, you yeah. know. So I'm, I'm definitely accessible. All right on. And, of course, we'll shout you on on the, on the video as well and then on, on my IG page. But, yeah. Um, Jason, I gotta thank you, man. This was really good. It's I'm, awesome, I'm man. Super honored to have you here and yeah, and to talk story with you. And uh, had a blast. Do we do we do we shoot this? Yeah. Man, so at the it? at the end of the show, people know we do a compi. Actually, people at home, I hope they compi with us. But compi with us. Yeah, compi with us. Cheers with us. So, um, Jason, this is to you. This is to your success in the future, uh, for the the series down the road, of course, with Concrete Rainbow, and then this is to you for. Whatever you do in the future, I think it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. And thank you. Blessings brother. to you and your family, man. And happy holidays. Happy holidays, brother. Thank Come you. Come by. Come by.